So you wanna build yourself a PC, your budget is 2,500 to around $3,500 and you're wondering what to build. Perhaps you should go with some of these options. These are the best bang for buck create PC options that you could get. If I had that budget, that's what I would buy. Perhaps you've seen me build one of these PCs behind me and you're thinking, oh, I wish I could have some of these. Do you know what? This PC that I'm suggesting right now is actually a much better bang for buck option than some of these behind me. So if you're looking to save money and get yourself something absolute beastly, this is the video for you. So this PC that I'm recommending right now is $2,517 in total. Now, if your budget is less, I highly recommend checking out the previous video or the one before that, because this is part three of this series and whatever your budget is, you can find it in there. So. For the motherboard, as controversial as this is, I'd highly recommend the ProAd Z790 Creator Wi-Fi motherboard. Now, you can go with any of the other ones out there, feel free, but there are some selling aspects of this that you can't deny just make this stand out. Number one, Thunderbolt 4 and 10 gigabit Ethernet. There is no other motherboard out there that has this combination. And as a creator, if you're thinking of expanding your business in the future where you need maybe Thunderbolt 4 NASs or 10 gigabit Ethernet connectivity, this offers these already in there. Plus, you're gonna get three months free of Adobe Creative Cloud when you're buying this. So if you're already paying for this, you can consider that off the price. It's all the bells and whistles. Now, if you go with some of the gaming motherboards, they're not gonna have 10 gigabit ethernet. They have very gamery look, or you're not gonna get as fast front panel connectivity, for example. I'm using this in my personal PC, and I think it's amazing. Even though I had the RMA issue, regardless, unfortunately, any of the other brands don't offer a better replacement for this motherboard. If you know any, I'd love to know from you in the comment section below. So very important note before we go on to the CPU at different platforms. Since filming this video, there has been a little bit of a development of an issue on an Intel platform. And I don't want this video to be Intel versus AMD kind of a debate, but rather giving you the best options as a creator. So number one, if you don't know what the issue is about and how what's going on, then I highly recommend checking out my video about the issue. Number two, if you don't know how to fix the issue or get the best support for that issue if you're encountering any of the issues then highly recommend checking that one out as well so you know what you're getting yourself into number three since releasing the video i'm actually updating some of the links in the description below as well to offer you an amd platform alternative as well so even though i don't mention this in the video there will be links for amd platform options in the description below the only thing that's going to change is the motherboard and the cpu perhaps even RAM, but all the rest of the parts in this video are still related to you as well. The upside for going with AMD is that there is no reported instability issues, perhaps a little bit of a lower RAM support or lower RAM speed support IMC. You're also gonna get a much better upgrade path because the platform continues a little bit longer. So you can upgrade to Ryzen 9000 and beyond. In terms of performance right now at this point, you're probably gonna get a little bit less bang for buck with AMD platform, but it's up to you to decide if you wanna go with the issue or potential fix of the issue or AMD platform that seems to be a little bit more solid option right now. And the same goes for the upgrades later on in the video. If you're looking for upgrades, there will be AMD upgrade options down in the description there as well. So just follow those links in the description. It'll be very clear there. And last very important note is whether you go in AMD or Intel or buying any of the parts, highly recommend finding a reputable retailer or a shop where you know that you can get easy returns or easy swaps or RMAs whenever whatever happens with your PC. So if you have anything wrong, you can get an easy fix. Now for $2,500, believe it or not, you're gonna get 4900K i9. So this is a 24 core CPU, 8P cores, 16 E cores, and people who tell you E cores don't matter, they don't know what they're talking about. The E cores for creators are absolutely amazing, especially if you're using Premiere Pro and Media Encoder using Adobe. These two together, they work amazingly. You can edit and export at the same time, and it doesn't look like anything's happening in the background. The e-cores are absolutely amazing. It's super fast in anything you do. And for $2,500, I can't believe that you can recommend CPU that good. It says new gaming desktop processor, but believe me, for creators, it's better than for gaming. For gaming, there are actually better CPUs available but it is really good for creators. If you do gaming, it's very good for that as well. Now, this 4900K is actually quite hot. It pulls a lot of power. I highly recommend
recommend sticking to the Intel stock limits. If you don't know how to do that, check out one of my videos. I'll explain that over there. I'm going to go with the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 360mm AIO. It's $115 right now. And it's one of the best bank for work coolers. It's going to be very quiet. It already comes with the actual LGA 1700 bracket, CPU bracket that holds the CPU down very well and doesn't bend it over time as your motherboard, you know, stock would do. And it cools your VRMs, looks very good as well. Not too gamery, blingy and RGB. -y. Now for the OS drive, I highly recommend going with the Solidime P44 Pro 1TB drive. This goes for $89.99 right now. And this is single-handedly the best NVMe SSD that I have ever tried on the channel. Go check out my benchmarks. And I didn't believe it until I tested a lot of other SSDs and realized that all of the others are slotting underneath this one. For operating sister, there is no better Gen 4 drive than this. Yes, there are Gen 5 drives, but they are so much more expensive, a lot hotter. So for best bang for buck, this is the one. Now you've got the operating system drive. You also need a project drive or cache drive. And for that, I highly recommend going with the WD Black 2 terabyte SN850X. It's a high-end Gen 4 drive and performs very, very well. For that price, you're not gonna be able to beat it. It's amazing. If you wanna save even more for your SSDs, I'd highly recommend checking out one of my latest SSD reviews where you can see the benchmarks of all the SSDs that I've tested on the channel and then picking some of these there. Perhaps you're looking at Lexa NM790 or you're looking at some other manufacturers, Samsung. How do these compare? Well, in the channel, you can find all the information about that. Now for RAM, we're using this Corsair Vengeance DDR5. This is 5600 megatransfers per second, 64 gigabytes. And for creators, this is a really nice sweet spot. Now, a lot of people say that 5600 is, you know, low frequency and you can go much faster. Yes, but you'd go out of Intel's stock settings of the IMC and how fast the RAM can go. The 4900K actually natively supports 5600 megatransfers per second. So it's going to run in gear one. And going with faster RAM speed, go check out the video on the channel is not going to give you that much more performance. The higher capacity as a creator is a lot more important. And in the future, if you want to double your capacity, just buy two of these and you're good to go. You do have to probably lower the frequency of the RAM because you probably can't run four sticks at 5600 megatransfers per second. Now the exciting part, the GPU. We're going to be using the RTX 4070 Ti Super. This is basically a little bit of a cut down version of the 4080 Super because it's got 16 gigabytes of VRAM a lot and is exactly the same GPU die. It's just a little bit lower down version. And for bank for buck, you're going to get the best bank for buck with this one. The 4080 and 4080 Super, they're not going to be that much more faster. Have a look at their reviews there, but they're going to cost a lot more than this here. So for bang for buck, this is the GPU to get. Now you might like a different design or a different manufacturer of 4070 Ti Super. I found this Zotac Gaming one was the cheapest one in there, but I'll try to leave some alternatives in the description below if you like different manufacturer. Now this GPU is very good at pretty much anything you throw at it. Video editing, photo editing, 3D, and because of the Nvidia Studio drivers, you're gonna get very stable performance and like really good experience. Now, if we're talking about very specific workflows, like like video editing, for example, in DaVinci Resolve, then this will not give you the best performance for your money. And I highly recommend going and checking out that video where I'm talking about all of the GPUs for DaVinci Resolve, for example, or all of the GPUs tested. Then if you are using only very specific workflow, perhaps going with AMD GPU might be a better option for you. But the general GPU that does best in all of the aspects of it, 3D, video, photo, anything you throw at it, this NVIDIA one is best option for you. But if you're doing photo editing or video editing and you want to save a little bit of money, then highly recommend going with the Intel Arc A770. It's very good for photo and video editing in any of the Adobe Creative Cloud programs, but it's not as good in DaVinci Resolve and for 3D. So if you're using some of these things, better go with this NVIDIA one or some of the AMD ones. I highly recommend checking out that previous video. For power supply, this is a Thermaltake Tough Power GF3. And this is a PCIe 5.0 ready and ATX 3.0, which means you're gonna get a native 12 volt high power cable, the 600 watt cable. So if you go with a 4090 in the future, for example, you just plug one cable in and you sort it. It's very nice. You're not gonna have to have any converters or extensions or something like that. And it is 
80 plus gold verified. So a very solid option of a power supply, 10 year warranty and not too bad price for that. Supports all of the components that you have inside and even an upgrade if you go with a 4090, 5090 GPU in the future. Now at this price point, I probably wouldn't change the PC case. Now you can go and pick out any one you want, but they all fit in the Fractal Design Focus 2 case. Now feel free to pick out your favorite, but that's what I would go with. Now the total for this is $2,517 and 71 cents but if you have extra 960 dollars something like that for an upgrade bear in mind these are mix and matchable here's what i would do the motherboard there's really no upgrade in there i'd leave it the same the cpu there's no real upgrade i'd leave it the same you can go with the 4900 ks but honestly it's a waste of money i wouldn't go with that it just doesn't make sense but I would upgrade the cooling. So this is extra $13 or something like that right now, what I'm seeing here. But this will give us 420 millimeter radiator, which means you're gonna get very big fans. It's gonna be quieter and just performs a little bit better than the 360 millimeter version. But if you go with this cooler, you're gonna have to upgrade the case as well because the previous case that I offered you is not gonna be supported. So these two aren't mix and matchable. Wait for the case, I've got something beautiful for you. The OS SSD, I'm gonna leave the same, but we're also gonna be adding a secondary SSD, the same SSD P44 Pro from Solidime. And this is gonna be our cache drive because the random read and write speeds for this SSD are super fast. So all of your programs, we're gonna be setting that the cache Cache drive will be this one so all of the temporary files temporary information that needs to be stored and accessed we're going to be accessing this from this drive and because your motherboard supports four m.2 ssds we're going to fill all of them now for the project drive we're actually going to be using the samsung 990 pro ssd four terabyte version right now i can see this 299 dollars this is the cheapest i've ever seen this being so i'm not sure if this deal is going to be on when you're watching this video i really hope this is going to be check out the links in the description below and different shops but this is incredible deal. I've never seen this as cheap. And if you look at the benchmark for the 990 Pro, this is one of the best drives that I have tested as well. It's so close to the Solidime P44 Pro, but in the consistency test, the Samsung is so much better. So if you're really hammering something as a creator with big large assets and I don't know, rendering something all the time in there or creating big files on it, this is an incredible drive for you. So you're gonna have two project drives, four terabytes each, totaling eight terabytes in total now to upgrade the ram you can either get two of the previous ram that i offered you in the previous section or you can actually get a four stick kit which is going to be a lot better in terms of stable performance for you as a creator you can get two git and a two git and put them together they will work but you have to lower the frequency of the ram to actually get it working properly or you can get this four stick kit for 128 gigabytes 5600 mega transfers per second and because this is already tested together it's going to work a lot better and smoother which for a creator having a stable ram is a really good option you don't like the blue screens of death that's probably the upgrade you want like i said the gpu i would stick with the same one 4070 ti super unless you're a 3d creator and you really want better rendering performance then probably look at the 4080 super but for most people this is the best bang for buck option for power supply i'd upgrade that as well because now this is 80 plus platinum rated which means it's more power efficient so if you're a creator who uses the pc all the time eight hours a day the more you use it the more efficient this power supply is because it's just going to save you electricity and time especially if you're rendering overnight or doing a lot of work like that the more your pc is on the more this upgrade of a power supply will save you now this is not a very big upgrade it's only a 38 dollar upgrade and i highly recommend going for this one the 1200 watt which means that your pc even in full load is going to be more in the optimized and more power efficient range and it supports all the future upgrades as well very good option of a power supply if you want to get this one i'd highly recommend checking this one out oh this is used Sorry, a little mistake. The option that I gave you there is the used one. The new one is $211, which is an $82 upgrade. Now for the case upgrade. The case is the Fractal North XL. This is a big case, a little bit bigger than your ATX size case, but it does support the 420 millimeter radiator in the front. It is beautiful. It is so nice looking. I mean, look at that. It is so gorgeous if you want you can get the mesh version on the side you so you can't see your components but it lets some air in on the side or you can get a white version as well if you like the white one instead i personally like the black one really nice so you've got the gold and black and this dark wood in there oh it's gorgeous will it give you extra performance 
not really, but it's beautiful. And I have to mention uh, something extra as well. When you're going with a 420 millimeter radiator, I mean, this case does come with some included fans, so you might be able to use them, but if you need any extra fans, I highly recommend checking out Arctic P14 Max. This is, these are really good performance and bank for buck kind of fans, but don't buy them before you build in the case because you might not need them. Just use everything that you have in the case and what's included and then use these if you need any extra or you need any extra on the previous case. Now the upgrade cost is extra $1,002 and will total you at $3,520.40 if you go with all of the upgrades. Bear in mind, you can mix and match them. And you might be saying, well, I don't know how to build a PC. This is quite expensive. I'm probably gonna mess something up. Absolutely not. Just go check out the build guides in the description below. I'll show you how to build it, how to set it up, how to install software, Windows. It's a lot simpler than you think. And once you build one, you're on the train and you're gonna be building a lot of PCs. And in the future, if you wanna upgrade, do something, it's, it's a very nice thing to do. Now, if you have any more budget or any less budget that I mentioned in this video, I'd highly recommend checking out the previous part or the next part because then that's what I would go for for the best bank for work creator PC. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the comment section below. Bye-bye.